the time to our chairman to Rapata, and um, he has a much more extensive uh, uh, news on the ground to share with you. Uh, but I would like to uh, just mention and share with you that currently um, uh, there is a two-week forum at the United Nations uh, which uh, is uh, ongoing till uh, end of this week um, titled, uh, called the UN Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues. Uh, this forum had, was always very important for Crimean Tatars because it is a platform where indigenous representatives can come and address their issues. But since last year, of April 24th, the uh, Ukrainian parliament adopted a resolution designating the Crimean Tatars as indigenous people of Crimea and also recognized measures of the Crimean Tatar people and the Kurultai, which is a self-governing uh, assembly that is elected by the Crimean Tatars as its legal and official representative organs of the Crimean Tatar people. Uh, the statement of, of, by the government uh, of Ukraine in support of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People has really expedited and fast-tracked our uh, collaboration in addressing the occupation in particular of Crimea. It is a illegal annexation and occupation. The Crimean Tatars were not at all consulted on the referendum. The Crimean Tatars, as a matter of fact, Right immediately after the occupation, the doors of Crimean Tatars were marked with X in order to identify who the, where the Crimean Tatars live, because they are the only voice in Crimea that uh, uh, denounced uh, the occupation and uh, the, 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 the referendum. Uh, the United Nations for us is a very, very important forum. Uh, the United Nations itself on March 27th passed a resolution that invalidated the Crimea's referendum outcome. And this means that uh, us uh, not recognizing uh, Russian uh, annexation of the territory and supporting the territorial integrity of Ukraine. And 100 countries voted in favor of the resolution and less than a handful voted against it. And of course, one of them was Russia. Uh, when listening to the news of the annexation of Crimea, the indigenous Crimean Tatars were very quick to point out that this, that this in fact, uh, was not the first occupation or annexation our terminology that's interchangeably uh, used is actually the second annexation. In 1783, uh, Catherine annexed Crimea. And uh, so, uh, so in fact, um, uh, the Tsar uh, stated at that time during the annexation that it was freeing civilizing the Crimean Tatars by making them part of the civilized culture. When the Crimean Tatars protested against the annexation, the first one on the Catherine II, Catherine II insisted that she was saving the Crimean Hunnite from misgovernment, further justifying by Prince Grigory Potemkin that Russia needed its own paradise and Crimea was going to be theirs. At the 11th session of the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues, a very, very important discussion took place. It was for us as indigenous people, and I open it. And it was on a special thematic issue, uh, issue um, thematic discussion, known as the Doctrine of Discovery. The Doctrine of Discovery was, in fact, uh, uh, a, a, a principle of international law 
a dating back from the late 15th century, which had its roots in a papal decree issued by Pope Nicholas V in 1452 that specifically sanctioned and promoted the conquest of colonization and exploitation of native territories. So, um, without going into the history at this moment, because I want to open the discussion for the Fatah, I just want to explain how your discussion on language was in fact a very imperialistic approach. For us, as indigenous people, uh, under the right to self-determination, which is under Article 3 of the UN Declaration of the Rights of Indis Indigenous People, we have a right to determine uh, who and where we want to be. And, uh, and Ukraine uh, never had an imperialistic uh, uh, agenda in its, in its history. So, uh, the indigenous people were uh, very comfortable to be with the Ukraine throughout Ukraine independence. And when, uh, 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 going back, uh, going forward uh, quicker to the, um, uh, the deportation uh, during the Soviet era on May 18, 1944, the Crimean Tatars were deported en masse by Soviet Stalin. Uh, they surrounded every Crimean Tatar home, gave 15 minutes for the Crimean Tatar people to gather their belongings, and they were loaded on cattle train wagons and shipped off to Siberia. My parents were very young, as was Refata's parents, who were the victims of communism, who were the victims of this deportation. Uh, this uh, this uh, loading of people on the cattle train wagons this May 18, 1944 is known as the Surgun, uh, which is a violent uh, exploitation of people, uh, was also known by us as crematoria on wheels. This is considered, this deportation, as one of the most blatant examples of demographic engineering, with the goal of entirely eradicating the Crimean Tatars from their indigenous homeland. Crimean Tatars have no other home but Crimea. I would like to quickly end in a few minutes by saying, after the deportations, the Russian ethnics replaced the Crimean, uh, replaced uh, the Crimea after deporting the Crimean Tatars. So today, when you hear about uh, um, uh, having uh, this unif uh, so-called unifying voice that Crimea uh, w wants to secede from annexation. It is the voice of the Russian ethnics that Russia is underlying and giving voice to. The Crimean Tatar voice has not, never been voiced. There is, and also a, uh, a uh, on the, one of the other articles of, of the UN Declaration of uh, on the Rights of Indigenous People states that if there's any decisions that are taking place on the land of the indigenous people, that they be informed with prior informed consent. And of course, that has not uh, taken the persecution and the murders that have taken place since the occupation. I will leave that to Rafat uh, to mention. And finally, the indigenous Crimean Tatars once were 95% of the habitants of Crimea. On May 18, 1944, after the deportation in 1945, 0% of, of uh, Crimea was habited by the Crimean Tatars. Um, this is absolutely uh, unacceptable. After the fall of communism, 300,000 Crimean Tatars returned uh, when Ukraine became independent. And just when we were ready uh, to begin, and with much challenges, mind you, uh, now this second occupation has occurred. It is very important that I would like to communicate in this academic institution, which is my alma mater, 
that this current annexation and I can dealt the fears of the indigenous Crimean Tatars in Crimea that they will be once again deported. They are extremely fearful. They say we do not, uh, we, we go to sleep not knowing what will wake up. I don't understand what this occupation is about. The occupiers say they are defending the Russians, but who are they defending them from? So it's very, very important that, uh, that when you listen to the news, that because Russia may be a more experienced propagandist, um, uh, does not mean that what they're doing in Crimea is correct. So we are indigenous people. We are very sensitive to the indicators that's on the ground. And uh, we are very much connected to our land and our culture. Our identity is defined through Crimea. I don't know anybody in my family, in my lineage, that has not been born in Crimea. And the only is, of course, I was not. But after my parents' deportation, there's no one that I know that was born anywhere outside of Crimea.